Right, in this video we're going to have a look at the second part of calculating uncertainties for your EMPA and that is looking at percentage uncertainties. Now, percentage uncertainties are always necessary when you're multiplying, dividing or raising to a power. So whenever you're combining uncertainties, be it for working out an area or if you're having to work out an equation, for multiplying, dividing and raising to a power you always need to convert from an absolute uncertainty into a percentage uncertainty. They also give us an instant idea of how reliable our results are. So instead of like with absolute uncertainty just having a plus or minus rating, it shows us how that absolute uncertainty factors as a percentage of our actual result. It also then lets us compare different methods to see which gives us the most reliable result. So for a single reading, that is a reading where you are using the precision of the instrument as your absolute uncertainty, you just work it out as a normal uncertainty. That is, you take your absolute uncertainty, your plus or minus value, you divide that by the result that you got and you times it by 100. So if we go back to our example of our uh, voltmeter and ammeter in one, for the top example, 5.9 volts, you might remember that our absolute uncertainty is the precision of the instrument. So that's plus or minus 0 0.1 volts. That's the smallest reading that you can get. And for our current, it's plus or minus 0 0.01 amps. Again, our current here reads to two decimal places. So let's work out the uncertainty for the voltage. I take my absolute uncertainty, my plus or minus 0 0.1 volts, I divide it by my reading, and I multiply it by 100 to give me a percentage uncertainty of 1.69%. Now if I have a look at the current, I take my absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.01, I divide that by my reading of 0 0.12, and multiply it by 100 to give me 8.33%. Now instantly, looking at these two values, <clears throat> I can see that the reading on my current and my percentage uncertainty of 8.33% much higher than 1.69% for the voltmeter. As a result, I can state that my result for the voltage is more reliable than my result for the uncertainty. Of course, as with our absolute uncertainties, usually we'll be dealing with a range of readings, and that means that we will have got a result from a mean. Apart from that, we calculate the percentage uncertainty in exactly the same way. We take our absolute uncertainty, which for a range of readings is half the range, divide it by the mean result and multiply it by 100. So for a table where I have taken three sets of readings for the mass of an object, my mean to actually give me my value of the mass is 122. I add these three together and then I divide them by three. My range, which is just my largest reading, 124, minus my smallest reading of 120, is 4 grams. But of course my absolute uncertainty is half of the range, so my absolute uncertainty is plus or minus 2 grams. How do I work this out as a percentage uncertainty then? Well, I take my absolute uncertainty of 2, I divide it, by my mean mass, my obtained result, of 122, and then I multiply that by 100 to give me a percentage uncertainty of 1.64%. So if we compare the three that we've looked at in this exercise, my percentage uncertainty for voltage was 1.69%, for current was 8.33%, and for mass, 1.64%. So comparing them, the uncertainty for the current out of all those three is by far the least reliable. It has the greatest uncertainty.